Hey there, I have 20,000 plus photographers in a Facebook group and there are some editing concerns and struggles that keep resurfacing over and over again. People will post, hey, I need some uh, critiques or hey, does anyone know how to fix this? And so I see a theme and I wanted to do a YouTube episode that's going to address some of the most common and sometimes most overlooked editing mistakes that I see photographers continuing to make. And so we're gonna dive in. I'm not just gonna show you what the mistakes are, I'm also gonna show you how to fix them. One reason I think that this happens so often is that because a lot of photographers are editing and they kind of start fresh every single time that they pull up an open Lightroom. They don't have patterns, they don't have rhythm, they don't have um, reoccurring adjustments that they make and so they really don't have their own style and that leads to inconsistent edits, which means that people don't recognize your work. It's a big thing and it, there's a lot of struggles. So if that sounds like you, what I want you to do is I want you to go down to the description underneath this video and look for a free download link because I've created a freebie for you and it's called KJ's Keys to Lightroom. And there's information in there for beginners, for people who are kind of intermediate and from people who are more advanced and want to really dive into understanding color grading more. I want you to make sure you get this guide. This is a great resource to up level your editing and understand even more about what Lightroom has to offer you. But also watch this video because it's free as well and it's going to help you tremendously the very next time you open Lightroom. All right, so now let's d dive, jump, hop, prepared, right? hop right into Lightroom. <laughs> okay, so something that I think a lot of people don't see when they're editing is that they think, oh, I'm doing an okay job, but they can't spot the absolute, the smallest problem that can make the biggest visual uh, frustration in an image. And so I want to show you this image and then I want to show you this. Do you see that difference? You may not be able to really pick up on it at first, but it's on their face and it's on the hand. So this is super glowy. Normally I'll be honest. I, I don't normally shoot this glowy, but it is fun and it is pretty. Normally I'm more like this. Like this is the approach. I have the, the light off to the side, but shooting directly into the sun, having her head block the sun, it does create a kind of magical glow. But this type of image is an, it's an, a great example of an image that's going to cause frustration because you have to be able to locate the source of struggle. The source of struggle is the fact that the sun is causing some crazy orange um, highlights on their skin. Um, and look at, it looks like his hand is on fire. Like someone painted it like bright orange. And so in order to adjust that, I've got to be able to spot it first. So what I did is that I basically just took a mask and you can see it here. If I go to the develop module, um, you can see on this image that I did masking um, right here on their face, right there. Those are the areas of the face. And then right here on his hand. So what I did was I literally just desaturated those parts because they were the most extreme. So this is um, without the saturation. You can see like the hand and here. Now let's talk about something here because I think when I look at the extreme difference between the orange skin and her arm, her arm looks a little bit dead. So even after I remove that orange intensity from his fingers, I think her skin still looks a little bit lifeless. His looks fine, but hers looks a little bit lifeless. So in a situation like this, uh, this moves into another point. There are two options here. Um, actually, there's more than two options, but most people think that, oh, well, if she looks a little bit warm and cold here, then I'm just going to warm up the image. But what happens when you warm up here? Look what's happening. The entire image is warming up the entire image. And that's not what I need. Um, in a lot of cases, especially when you're photographing Caucasian couples, if you're working with white couples with, with lighter skin, a lot of times you can add the warmth to just the part that you need to be warmed up by using color grading. Because when you come down to color grading, you're going to go to highlights. You can use all shadows, midtones, and highlights, but highlights is going to give you the biggest uh, example. I already, I'm already doing it 15%. Let's make this um, something a little bit more extreme, like 45%. Okay, do you see that? Now you'll notice though that the greens and the background, it got a little warmer, but nothing like what happened when I warmed up the entire image with the temperature slider. Because what it's doing, it's only warming up the highlights of the image. And so if you're working with people with lighter skin tones, then you can do it that way. Another way you could do it, especially here because I don't really need his skin tone to change. Um, I could literally just come do a little bit of a brush. I could just select her body skin and warm it up. Um, but another way that I would do that is just slightly warm up just with a little bit of just slightly here and then, and then test it out like there, that's fine. So that's just a quick way to do it. There's so many other ways you could select her, then just select her, her body skin and warm it up that way. Um, but in this scenario, I think that's the fastest option. So those are two things. 
finding warmth or orangey heaviness around the hairlines. This happens for a lot of people um, on the hairlines. Let me see if I can show you here. So a lot of times people have oranginess like under the chin or like around here where the sun is hitting or in the shadows and they don't realize or like right here's a great example. So you'll look at the image and think, oh, that's fine. But if you were struggling with color, Pay attention to these little pockets of overly saturated areas that don't stick out as, hey, that's the issue. That could be your problem. Um, the second thing is, is that you don't always have to warm up the image by using your temperature slider. If this is the only way that you warm up images, there is so much more available to you in Lightroom. A lot of times people want the brighter look. They want their images to pop, but they don't know how to get there. And the number one thing I see is that people say, oh, they look pretty properly exposed. Let's just add contrast in. Well, when you add contrast in like this, and then you're like, oh, and maybe I'll darken the blacks a little bit, then all of a sudden, what you're doing is that you're editing from a place of heaviness and you don't even realize it. So this is not how I edit. I do not approach editing this way. I've got to do foundational work on my images in order to get them to a place where I can add pop in exactly how I want and it's not going to weigh down the image. And let's go back to Adobe Standard, which is going to give you a real flat version, but I actually love, I love it because it's a great starting place. So you have to open up the image. You have to brighten up the heavy parts by opening up the blacks, opening up the shadows, reducing the highlights. And now, now we can come in and add in our pop. So I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't use the brightening up technique. And so then their images get stuck in this really dark, heavy state. So one other thing that I think causes frustrations with editing is that I, I think a lot of people don't realize that sometimes their hair can be blue, their client's hair. So he's got a blue tint to his hair and I'm literally just stripping that out, stripping that blue tint to the hair, which is just, a, it's a reflection of the sky in a lot of, in a lot of situations, um, is going to get rid of a lot of your frustrations because you're going to be able to strip out that weird part of the image. And then you can see the image for what it is like, okay, now what does the image need now that I got rid of the blue hair? But if you can't ever spot the blue hair then, or you can't ever spot, you know, where the harsh light is causing like a red ear or behind the, behind the leg is red, then all of a sudden you're just going to be doing sliders out the wazoo and you don't really get the edit that you want. And you start ruining other parts of the image because you can't find the one true real problem. So the lesson from today is that a lot of times issues with editing are smaller and seemingly insignificant, but they do matter and they add up. So the more that you can be aware, the more powerful it will be. This is why I put an entire lesson in my editing course about recognizing the issue, because if you can recognize the issue, it will save you so much frustration and it will allow you to have a more streamlined workflow because you can spot the issue, fix it and move on instead of getting stuck on one image. Okay. So if that was helpful, if you enjoyed that and you have, maybe you already been through my free class and you're like, I just want more training and I want it to be free. Great. I have a whole playlist for you. We go through tons of Lightroom tutorials where I'm teaching what I know about editing and I would love for you to dive in. So check the playlist, make sure you sign up for the free class and get excited because if you like and subscribe, you will see more videos from us in the future. Bye. Bye.